guys! Happy Wednesday! Welcome to my Wednesday pregnancy vlog. I'm actually filming this two days, so I have to edit and upload it tonight. I've been a little bit behind because we had a lot of excitement this week, which I will talk about later in my Friday vlog. So if you want to find out what's happened this week, you can go ahead and check out my vlog that will be posted on Friday. Hopefully Friday. Hopefully it won't be late. Last week, I did a vlog about the, your three main options of where you can be when you have your baby. So what I wanted to talk about this week, just in connection with that, was my experiences with home birth, how, what I thought of it, um, you know, would I do it again? And the other thing I wanted to talk about was where I'm going to probably have this baby or where is planned that I, or where I would like to have this baby. That's what I want to talk about today. You'll have to excuse me if I run out of breath because when you're pregnant, it can be really hard to get a deep breath in or it's hard to breathe and maybe you just find that you're out of breath for no reason. That happens to me a lot. It happened to me a lot with Emmeline and it's happening to me again with this pregnancy. So I'm, I feel like I'm constantly gasping for breath, especially if I'm talking a lot, which I do when I'm filming these vlogs. So I apologize if it sounds like I can't breathe or I'm gasping for breath. So sorry about that. If you watched my pregnancy, not my pregnancy, my birth story vlog, I put it up in two parts because it was such a long story. If you watch that, you'll know that I did have Emmeline at home. She was born at home. It was not a planned home birth. I had considered it because we were in England, but it wasn't something that I had decided to do because it was my first baby and during rush hour where we lived, it could take up to an hour or more to get to the hospital from our house. If it wasn't rush hour, it takes about 15 minutes, but during rush hour, the highway would get so backed up that you could, it could take a really long time. So it wasn't something that I was comfortable with. The other thing was that I really, it was a rental house that we were renting, it was we didn't own it. And I thought, I don't know if the landlord's going to like it. And I felt awkward about asking him. And then also it was just my first baby. So I thought it would be nice to go to a birthing center, which is where I wanted to have Emmeline. I wanted to go to a birthing center. I did not want to go to the hospital. It was the farthest thing on my list. It was either birthing center or home for me. The hospital was not on my list. The reason for that is just because I wanted, you know, a, the most natural setting that I could get. I believe that childbirth is completely normal. It's very natural. Your woman's body is meant to do it. Your woman's body. <laughs> A woman's body is meant to have babies. It's meant to do it. So childbirth is not something that scares me. It's not something I worry about. Most of the time it works out completely perfectly. There can be problems. There can be complications. But for me, childbirth is just a really natural process. So I wanted to be as far away from something that medicalized it. That's just my, that's just my preferences and how I want it. Some women are completely opposite and that's totally okay. Everyone's different. So saying that, those are my reasons that I, I didn't want to have a home birth. Had it been my own house, maybe not my first baby, or maybe I had um, a closer time, I mean, transfer time to the hospital, it would have been less worrisome for me. But it wasn't so, it just wasn't something that I had planned on doing. I wanted to go to the birthing center. The birthing center was 15 minutes from our house and because of its position, it was quicker for an ambulance to transfer there and there was no rush hour, hour that would get in the way. But where we lived, we the only way to get to the hospital was off on the highway and it just wasn't ideal. So the birthing center to me sounded like a perfect option and as I had said in my last video, any sign that anything is going wrong, they would have transferred us to the hospital immediately. Because Emily was so little, they wanted me to be in the hospital. So my plan at that point was to go to the birthing center in the top of the hospital, which was obviously farther away from the house. But then I thought, well, I'll be in the hospital so I can probably go to that birthing center, the Spires unit in the top. Well, didn't end up getting there, ended up having a baby at home. My overall thing to say about having a home birth was that it was fantastic. I really, really liked it. I loved being at home in my own space. There was nobody there. It was just me and Alvin and the cats hanging out. I had the TV on in the background, which was a great distraction. I had my birthing ball, which I could sit on and, you know, just to get things going or to sit on for comfort. I was able to cook. As you know, I was cooking soup when Emily was when I was in labor and it was really nice. I could go out in my garden and sit in the sun and just relax and it was a really really, really nice setting to be in. It was comfortable. I mean, I knew where everything was. It was really, 
nice because there were so many distractions for me and they were comfortable distractions, things I wanted to do. And I loved that about being at home. I thought it was fantastic. There weren't a bunch of strange people, not strange noises. It wasn't a weird sterile environment that made me uncomfortable. I loved it, I thought it was fantastic. Another thing I really liked about being at home was that there were no rules or restrictions. I could do whatever I wanted. If I was hungry, I had something to eat. If I was thirsty, I had something to drink. Um, it was just like normal life, except you were in labor. I don't know if that <laughs> makes any sense to anyone. So it was like my own house. Everything was really comfortable. That's the main thing I have to say. It was just comfortable and really, really nice to be at home. There was no pressure, nobody hanging over you. You didn't feel uncomfortable what was happening. It was all very nice and natural. It just felt natural. It felt great. Because it was an unplanned home birth, it was a bit shocking, the whole experience, because we didn't expect for it to happen. And when I realized that, okay, we have to go home and the baby's gonna be born at home, it was okay with us at that point. I mean, it was a little bit shocking, but we were okay with it. We're like, okay, well, whatever. The baby's gonna be born at home. The midwife will come. The ambulance will come. Somebody will be there with medical knowledge. It'll be fine. What made it a little bit scary <laughs> I will say a little bit at the time it was terrifying was the moment we realized that no one was going to be there and it was just going to be me and Alvin that's when it got really terrifying and really scary because I just kept thinking if something goes wrong we have no way of fixing it we don't have specialized medical knowledge we don't know what to do um yeah there was a midwife on the phone but she wasn't there and for me at least for me, I was like, oh my God, that's terrifying. And I couldn't get that thought out of my head if something goes wrong. Like there's nothing I can do. I just felt hopeless. And I felt even more helpless because you can't stop the baby from coming out. When you, when you are pushing or when your body's pushing, you don't control that. That is all your body. Consciously, if you're thinking about, no, I don't want to push, it doesn't matter. Your body's like, no, this baby's coming out right now. We're going to be, we're going to be pushing. And that was scary for me as well, because no one told me that the urge to push, you always see in like the dramas on TV, they're like, okay, stop pushing. And the girl's like, okay. Yeah, no, that's not reality. You cannot stop pushing. You can't, you absolutely can't stop your body from doing it. So that's another thing that made me scared because I was like this is happening too fast and I can't stop it and I'm trying to stop it because I was genuinely trying to keep Emmeline in until the ambulance got there <laughs> sounds stupid now but at the time I was like I could do this um so that was when it got scary and that's the only thing that made the whole experience scary because when it comes to the negatives of a home birth uh for me there really weren't any negatives other than the fact that if you are going to have a home birth you need to make sure somebody's there i mean i would uh if you want to do it unassisted that's totally fine but personally that was the biggest negative was that we didn't plan it ahead of time so we didn't have anyone there which isn't really a negative because we didn't plan to have a home birth so it's not really a negative um, let's see, the biggest regret that I have with the home birth is going to the hospital afterwards. It was a bit of a difficult situation for us because Emily was really small and they had kind of scared us at the ultrasound being like, you have to be in the hospital to have this baby. And I think that's just them being cautious for, you know, whatever reason, because they need to be and because they are. But it really scared us and the midwife, she was under a lot of pressure because the ambulance crew was there and they have to do what she says. And they were off the clock. So they were just sitting there like, our shift is over, but we're here. <laughs> so there was a lot of pressure for her and she was also calling the hospital and they were like you need you should bring the baby in because the baby's little she did give us the option um you know if you if you want to go in now the ambulance is here they can already drive you but if something does go wrong or different or you know the baby's not doing so well then you guys will have to drive the baby in yourself later on or you'll have to get another ambulance or so on and so forth and we were in such a state of shock from what happened we actually were genuinely shocked about the whole situation that we just thought okay we'll go because we didn't know what to do we're in shock we're just listening for, to professionals who couldn't even give us their proper opinion because they were under pressure and that was the biggest regret that we have we did not have an enjoyable hospital stay and and it was just it was just not enjoyable after having this fantastic home birth and I say fantastic meaning the whole thing was fantastic apart from that moment of fear uh, it was and being at home being like, I'm already at home my baby's here everything's great we can spend the night together um, it was just such a letdown really I mean I had to wait six hours to get stitched I had a really small first degree tear the hospital was busy it was really hot Alvin had to go home the nurse that I had was really unhelpful and actually kind of mean and it was just such a pain and Emmeline didn't need to be there and they made it very clear to me that Emmeline didn't need to be there and they didn't know why we were there 
and it was just not a not a comfortable situation for us so that's the one thing I do regret <laughs> of course that is different for everyone I'm not saying that you shouldn't go to the hospital if, if you feel that you need to or even if you want to after you have a home birth I'm not saying that I'm just saying for us it was just not the right thing to do and unfortunately it is what we did overall home birth I thought it was fantastic I thought it was wonderful and I loved it and I know other women who have given birth at home and they have all loved it I don't think I personally know anyone who had a home birth that did not like it so if it is something that you're considering I'll tell you right now I would recommend it <laughs> so that leaves where am I gonna have this baby well providing that everything continues to go well I have three options I can be at home but it's a bit expensive in Norway. I can be in a birthing center, but there's really only like a couple birthing centers. There's not that many. Or I can be in the hospital, which is the most common that everyone does here. So the way Norway works is you have to, if you want to be in a hospital or in a birthing center, you need to apply to get a place there. Because they're busy and there's lots of women giving birth, you might not get your first choice. If you don't apply, they'll automatically give you a hospital to give birth in. If you want to apply, to somewhere you have to do it quickly and especially if you want to get into a specific hospital that everyone wants to get into or if you want to get into the birthing center which everyone wants to get into because there's so few of them so you need to apply and you have to be quick about it oh that's how it works in Norway it's a bit different for me I didn't know that you had to apply <laughs> for a birthing place because in England you just make the decision yourself and you you do it um, so I didn't know that and I actually didn't end up filling out any paperwork until 16 or 17 weeks for applying so I was really late to apply the reason I ended up applying is because I hadn't decided where I wanted to have my baby yet and I thought I I don't know if I want to have the baby at home I don't know if I want to go to birthing center or if I want to go to the hospital so I just applied I applied to because I also I didn't like the hospital or I don't like the hospital that I was would have been defaulted to and I just for many reasons I'm not going to talk about it but I don't prefer that hospital and so I thought anywhere but there <laughs> in my mind so I filled out paperwork and I applied to some other places I applied to birthing centers and I applied to a couple hospitals I thought about having a home birth and I've decided at this point I'm not going to have one and the reason that I'm not that's not the plan it could happen as we know from last time but the plan is not to have a home birth the reason is because we are not living in our own home at the moment this is a house where there is lots of people and lots of activity all the time we are many people that live in one house we are children, we are adults, we, there's lots and lots of people coming and going all the time. And I just thought that is not a relaxing, nice environment to be in. For me, when I'm in labor, I don't want tons of people there. I maybe want Alvin, a couple people here and there. I'd like it to be a little bit more relaxed. Um, also, this isn't my house, so I don't have the same comfort level that I did when I was in Oxford. It was my own place, I could do whatever I wanted. Here, it's not my own house. There's also not a bathtub here, so that is something I had to think about as well. I didn't have Emmeline in water. Let's make that clear. She was not born in water. I just was in the bathtub because I thought this is clean and, and easy to clean up and it's not my house. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about a water birth personally myself. I don't like taking baths, so I don't know if I would do that anyway, but it is a clean, safe environment and it might be nice. Maybe I want to get in the water. I don't have that option here, so I don't I don't really like that. There's too many people, it's too noisy, it's not relaxing, it's not my own space, there's no bathtub, so there's just too many negatives. On top of that, you have to pay a lot of money to have home birth because the midwife has to be on call for six weeks and you have to pay for that out of your own pocket. Norway does not cover home birth, England does. Which is funny because according to all the midwives, it's cheaper to have home births. So I don't know why the government doesn't pay for that. But I think there, there's a lot of women who are trying to push for that now. So home birth is crossed off the list for now unless it happens surprisingly. At this point, it's in the system that I had Emmeline very quickly in less than two hours. And so basically everyone has told me, all the midwives, the second that you go into labor, pre-labor, even though pre-labor may take longer, even though this baby may, this labor may take longer, go directly to where you're going to have your baby. Don't wait, don't hang around at home. It's a bit unfortunate, but I understand why <laughs> the I mean, if your labor, if my labor is shorter, it could be, it'll be less than two hours. And if it's less than two hours, to get to the hospitals and the birthing centers, you have to drive at least an hour, hour and a half to get to them from here. I wouldn't make it. I'd be either having baby in the car or having the baby at home. I don't want to do that, I've decided. So, and I don't want to pay for it if it's a surprise. So, 
the second I go into pre-labor, I need to get going to where it is that we are planning on having this baby. There'll at least be two more options. I have a birthing center or a hospital. I think you guys know my opinions about hospitals. If I don't have to be in one, I don't want to be in one. So providing that everything continues to go well with this pregnancy and continues to go well with this baby's growth and development, I would really like to be in a birthing center. So I have applied to a couple birthing centers. There's really only a few around here. I do also have a place at a hospital in case, um, but I applied to a birthing center. The birthing center that I applied to, it's impossible to get into. I was not thinking that I was going to get into it. Everyone says, if you want to get into this birthing center, you have to apply the second you find out you're pregnant. I didn't apply till 16 or 17 weeks. I didn't think I was gonna get in and the woman called me and she told me on the phone Oh, I just like to congratulate you. You got in our last spot for that time period. Oh, I was so excited I was absolutely over the moon. I was just so excited that I to find that I got a spot in the birthing center. You get into a birthing center, you have to write a formal letter, you have to give them lots of information, and they basically select you. <laughs> like it's a really difficult selection process. You write a formal, like a personal letter and everything. So I really hope that everything continues to go well with the pregnancy and the baby because I really want to go there because I like it so much. <laughs> we actually went to have a tour of it on Monday was so cozy and comfortable and it's really relaxing and they have, it's like a hotel as well. I think a lot of the hospitals have that actually, where after you have your baby, you kind of go to a, like a, almost like a hotel room. I think that's more common in Norway because that's where what happened to a couple of my friends. So this place as well has like a little hotel room, but it's for your family, meaning your kids. So it doesn't have to be just me and the baby. It's me and Alvin and the baby and Emmeline would be allowed to be there, which is so nice. They have a little play area, living room, and they have a full kitchen. So while you're there, your birth partner or your family, they can make food for you and bring it to you. The kid, if you have a toddler or another kid, they can play in the play area. So that is so fantastic. It's a small unit. There's not that many rooms. There's not that many people there. It's not lots of, it's not very noisy. There's not lots of people coming and going. So it's, it's a really relaxed environment and the rooms, the birthing rooms are really, really big. As I was saying, I'm sorry, my camera battery dies and my memory stick was full. So the rooms are really, really big that you can give birth in. They have lots of different things that you can use while you're in labor, things that maybe you don't even know what they are, but the midwives do. They have all have a birthing pool and they're really big and really nice. It's a really family friendly environment and it just looks so wonderful. So I feel so fortunate to have gotten a spot there and I'm, I feel really, really fortunate. I really do. I can't say that enough. And I really hope that everything goes well because I really want to have this baby there because I like it that much. So I'm going to do everything I can from this point out to keep this pregnancy as healthy as I can, drinking lots of water, eating healthy, trying to work out even though I have an issue with my back, uh, just or just being active at that point. Um, and I really hope that everything goes well with the baby's development. It seems fine now, but I do have an ultrasound. Um, I do have an ultrasound in a couple of weeks just to check his size because Emmeline was really small. Hopefully he's an average size baby. I really, really hope that he is bigger than Emmeline was. I really do because I can't, like I just don't want to go through that stress again and I do want to be able to be in the birthing center and I don't know how Norway is with babies that are a little bit smaller. I don't know, even though I, I don't think Emmeline was that small. She was almost six pounds. She was five pounds, 11 ounces. So that's not that small really, um, in my opinion. So I don't know. I really hope everything goes well and I just hope everything goes well. So I hope that when it gets to that point to have this baby that we can have a more relaxing and nice experience. I mean, it took a lot last time. We were in shock and it took a long time for me to actually bond with Emmeline. Uh, more that time than I thought. I thought she was going to be born. I was just going to love my baby. Like, this is fantastic. But that's not what I felt. I, I felt like my maternal instincts. I would have protected my baby from anything, no doubt. And I wanted to take care of her, I did. But that big swell of love, I didn't get that until about, I would say five days later, maybe a week. Um, and that's, for me, it was shocking and I felt bad. I'm like, why don't I have this huge swell of love for this baby that you're told you're, you're gonna have or you assume that you're gonna have. I didn't have that. Um, I think it was because I was in shock. It was a really hard recovery for me. It was a really hard recovery for Alvin. It was just not the, I mean, it was great to be at home, but at the end, it was so shocking and so, so terrifying for us that, at least for me, I can't really speak for Alvin, that 
it, it just took so much out of us, I think. And it would be really nice to have, for our second baby, to have a more secure environment and to just feel better about the whole situation. I mean, if this baby does come at home, I feel much better because I've done it before by myself with Alvin. Um, I do feel better about it, but I would like for that not to be the case. I would like for us to be able to go to the birthing center, to feel comfortable, to feel relaxed, and to welcome the baby into the world in an in a nicer way and not not to have the the shock that we had last time or have to go through that that's what i'm hoping i'm really hoping so i'm only 25 almost 26 weeks now so i've got a long way to go i've got a long way to go so just hopefully everything goes well wish me luck <laughs> and that's that so that's just what i wanted to talk about today and i hope the only thing the only thing about the birthing center is all of them here is it's quite a far drive they are all for a drive. And the only thing I think about giving birth, I'm like, oh, I have to leave Emmeline. I mean, she's can't, I, I don't mind, I, I would love to have her there after, but I don't want her there when I'm gonna give birth. Cause I feel like it would be more, of, I don't know if it would be a negative distraction for me, but it's just not something I want. I know a lot of women love to have their kids there. I don't think that's what I want. Um, I don't know, I just, I just don't. I want to be able to focus just on one thing and not on a bunch of other stuff. So I'm not really sure how I feel. But that's the plan. So anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to say today about where I'm going to have the baby and my experiences on a home birth. Good luck with deciding where to have your baby if you're pregnant. And if not, now you know more about what's going on with this pregnancy and what's going on with me. <laughs> I'm going to go now. It's time for lunch. I'm going to go put Emmeline down for a nap because she's eating lunch right now. I think she's done. So thanks so much for watching today. I will see you guys next week. I'm not sure what I'm going to talk about. About, but it'll be something <laughs> I'll see you also on Friday for the regular vlog on Friday and my bump update comes on the weekend I like to say Saturday but sometimes it comes on a Sunday <laughs> All right. bye